you can think of it now in 2024. But uh, a Google translation of a Marathi article, even that like five years ago, was not very accurate. It used to be very patchy. It used to give maybe some words, but it used to definitely not be grammatically correct. And you know, just out of context, Google Translate also used to translate it really badly. But of course, now in the past two years, AI and all that, it's improving. But uh, I'll come to that also. But you know, if you don't know this already, most of the AI tools are trained on Wikipedia. So we, if uh, if you want, say, your chat GPT to be able to do Pakistani or do Marathi or do any other lo local language, you need content in that on Wikipedia. Because again, they don't want the AI tools don't want to pay for your books, so they will take Wikipedia, which is free and the licensing is all fine. So uh, again, all the AI tools work so amazingly well because in English, because there's so much of content available on English Wikipedia. Whereas uh, it may not do so well on Marathi or Kokini because our Marathi and Kokini Wikipedia are still growing. And they haven't got enough of data to train their AI models on. So does it become a your job to like translate your team's job, the volunteers' job to translate Marathi and Kokini into English and put it in as reference as a reference article. I have tried doing so that. So that is it's verifiable? Yes, yes. A little bit of that also. A little bit of the other way around also because as I said we need more content in the in Marathi and Kokini also. But yeah, from the references and sources point of view, trying to add a Marathi source <laughs> on English Wikipedia. But from a content creation point of view, uh, you know, making, translating all this English content that we have about people, about kids, about Goa into Kokini and Marathi. So obviously, I, I know you all are not satisfied with my answer. So just a technical thing, you translated using Roman script or? I'll come to that. I'll come to that. Uh, but uh, I know you all are not satisfied with my answer right now. I can see it on your faces. But uh, what I would try, like all of you to keep an open mind is that as I said, it's in the work in progress. We are also you know, just volunteers do, trying to do our bit in our free time. So not a lot of us have, uh, we have tried to take larger initiatives, but uh, it's still a work in progress and it will be a work in progress. That's why we need more volunteers, what I would say. And it's not like we have a fixed formula right now that, okay, this is what will, um, this is how you can get a Wikipedia page approved or something like that. It's still a work in progress. We are all still struggling with it. And you know we try to take it. It's it's ending up being on a case by case basis itself. As I said, like a famous theatrist, but okay, and someone sitting halfway across the world feels that okay, that's not important enough. Okay, I'll move on in the interest of time. So uh, why a community? So why are we doing this as a part of a community initiative? A uh, little bit, as I, I mean, I've covered all of this already, so I won't go too much into detail now. I, I, Y'all asked a lot of questions, so I did cover all these topics already, because, see, suppose, uh, like the sources part, as I said, uh, someone who joins our volunteer team, so I'll just call it a volunteer team, someone who joins our volunteer team may, you know, read a lot of Marathi newspapers and may know that, hey, there's a lot of Marathi news coverage about this person. So then we guide them about how we can use those Marathi newspaper sources uh, on our English Wikipedia to create content. Then, uh, and basically what I said was about those two principles are verifiability, reliable sources, and no original research. So we as a team try to teach each other on, about these principles. Uh, we as a team, when uh, an article is nominated for deletion, like I mentioned, like we as a team try to work on improving the article and uh, justifying the need for why it should be kept. 
that okay, hey, it's a theatrist, but theatre is not just a local form of theatre, it's a very important thing here in Goa. It's like Broadway, uh, it's like the, our Broadway. How large is this uh, On WhatsApp, we have 200 plus members. So what we were doing... Uh, but you get stats from Wikipedia also, you know, Num number of people editing and how many pages they... So, uh, you can't get those stats correctly because Wikipedia, as I said, is an open project across the world. So even actually... The Kokani, I'm sure you gave it. Kokani, yes, but even the Kokani Wikipedia, it's open, right? Right. right. I mean, uh, for a few years, till 2012, if I'm not wrong, uh, that was in an incubator stage, so you had to request for access to the Kokani Wikipedia, which I'll come to work. But uh, now it's an open project, so if there's someone sitting in America, who for some reason, whatever reason, knows Kokani, for example, they can also edit, so now they are not necessarily go on. So what I'm trying to say is that okay, it's difficult to get these stats, especially for English Wikipedia when you know there are thousands of sorry, there are millions of editors across the world and thousands editing uh, Wikipedia pages about Goa and Goans. So we don't necessarily know uh, if they are from Goa, if they are from our group. Lot of lot, of, lot of photos have come from foreign tourists. For example, also, so, so we don't know. You, you don't know. Video. Like you look at Palole or Aldona or Anjuna or something. The best photos are given by them. So I'm sure you can like identify. Not geographically. Geog may not be possible geographically. I'm not sure. Maybe we have to develop some statistics to figure out. So Wikipedia, one more thing, they like to keep your identity anonymous. Hmm. So a lot of people who edit Wikipedia for various reasons like to keep the identity anonymous also. Yeah. And there are rules about how not to reveal anyone else's identity. Unless you want to. Unless you want to. No, I'm not saying asking for at least get counts. No, also, like like for example like for example I know every single edit I've made from two thousand and six onwards. Everything is tracked. Month by month, minute by minute, time by time. But if you're talking about geographically I'm not sure we can say so many exist from Goa unless we put up our hands and we are counted. So, as you know? Rico said, right, uh, every edit of his is documented from 2006. But there's no location, uh, geo location data, there's no geo tagging that, okay, uh, Rico is sitting in Goa when he made this edit. So, for them, Rico might as well have been yeah. sitting in America and making all those edits. Just, but they can just see that, okay, Rico has made these edits. That's all that they can see. But they don't want to reveal any personal information about it. Your username is? <laughs> sir. Yeah. S-E-R? Not sir. No, sir. Two, three. Two, three. <laughs> so like some you won't connect with him at all? Yeah. Like I get confused. Which is he using? Who is this? No, but still, total number of pages, total number of edits. Your, your, you can find out. If I know his username, right. if I know his username, I can get exact. No, I'm talking about like vis-a-vis -vis Goa, vis-a-vis -vis Konkani. I'll show you. I think I'll do that on the demo part. But I think I've answered the question on by the community. So, you know, that's what my point is. Please try to join and spread word about it. And, you know, we, we are doing this as a team. So, uh, during the pandemic, when the people had a lot of time, we used to do this thing called Wikipedia Weekend, in which uh, people had time, they had uh, patience, and, but they did not know how to use Wikipedia, how to edit on Wikipedia. So we were conducting this short, not just necessarily training program, more like one-on-one -on -one attention of uh, how to uh, go about doing something. Uh, also, right now I'm talking about Wikipedia, but we have a lot of other sister projects which are covered those. Because that only, as I said, full enough roughly, right? If you can't contribute in Wikipedia content, you can, you know, at least uh, click photos of important places or important things around Goa, and you can share those also. Because that's another project called Wikimedia Commons. But I'll get to that. Um, so yeah, our work is uh, English Wikipedia, which I've already covered now. This uh, Wikimedia Commons in terms of photo, dictionary, and there's uh, a nice story about Isidore Dantas and his uh, dictionary. So he has written a Kokani English dictionary, and you know, he, we call a Wikipedia and you know, Wikimedia's uh, rules on copyright, uh, he made his dictionary copyright free 
and Hindu released it the correct licensing so that we could uh, make use of his dictionary for uh, content on uh, dictionary, which is like a you know, Wikipedia version of a dictionary. And that's why uh, we were trying to, uh, again, that some point we realized that, okay, we are creating content, but we don't know much about the exact words, right? And uh, that's why we started doing a dictionary project that, okay, people may want to learn uh, the Kokani language itself, that maybe they want to, you know, share. Uh, there's no there were not a lot of dictionaries available. So, uh, again, another plugin for is Dantas that he has written a, very recently released a book uh, on the contemporary Kokani English dictionary. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, definitely our Kokani Wikipedia. And uh, yeah, now here comes the question. How many scripts do you all know Kokani is written in? Five. Okay, which all? There is Dekhanakri, Bhumi, there is the other big script, there is Malaga, I think Malaga. Malaga, yeah, that's all correct. So on our uh, Kokani Wikipedia, we do not discriminate. We had enough editors in these three scripts. So uh, we do not discriminate, we allow all three scripts on our Kokani Wikipedia. Uh, so we, so it was a big volunteer effort also. We had some uh, people from Karnataka who speak Kokani. So they were uh, writing in Kannada script. Then we had uh, uh, people writing in Romi and Devnagri scripts here in Goa. So yeah, we don't discriminate. You know, it's a bit, it's an inclusive project. And of course, Arabic and Malayalam also, we were trying for a while, but we did not know enough people who uh, know those scripts. So that's why it hasn't kicked off yet, is what I'll say. But hopefully in the future, right? But yeah, uh, this is what we have done so far across all the different different projects. So is the Kokani Wikipedia a translation of English Wikipedia or it's Kokani content? It's a uh, own content? It's a bit of both right now. Um, so as I answered that one question about who are they, we talk about on uh, English Wikipedia and I said that okay, the administrators are usually uh, people who are sitting halfway across the world, right? The moderators as usual. But on Kokani Wikipedia, we are the moderators. So we can, you know, have a bit of a leeway is what I would say. Definitely stick to those guiding principles, but there is some leeway on what we can add. So, uh, if we know something is correct, we don't really stick to the, you know, go around with a stick saying that, no, you have to get a proper source for this or something. So, Kokani Wikipedia, to some extent, has a little bit more content also about go and go on, because we are ourselves are the editors and, sorry, the administrators and all that, and we don't really go with, keep it that strict on Kokani Wikipedia. Obviously, if the project grows, we will do it. And that is our intention, but right now we are still growing as a Wikipedia, uh, Wikipedia, Wikimedia project itself. Are you connected in any way with Department of Archives? Not yet, no. So uh, definitely we want to, if anyone can help us with that, get them to help us with their content. But yeah, but, yeah it's, as I said, it's a volunteer driven effort, right? So each of us, with whatever in individual capacity we can do, we are trying. So, for example, I had books about Goa's liberation, right? So, uh, I am right now, as, as Nilanku said, in Bangalore, but I came back to Goa this month and I saw that, okay, in my house there are a lot of books on Goa's liberation. So, I started covering that topic right now. And, of course, Goa University has uh, given permission to use their Konkani uh, encyclopedia. So, they released it under the Creative Commons. So, there, yeah, there's a four-volume Konkani encyclopedia which was worked on by Dr. Tanaji Halankar and others. It's a little bit dated, but whatever is there, we are free to copy and reproduce. Okay. And it's in Kokni, but then it can be converted across the scripts and all that. There's no problem. Can I ask, like, I don't know if you finished, but how does this fit into the larger open information ecosystem for Goa? Like there's 
so uh, I mean our answer, but Rico will have a better answer, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, we are doing our best, as I said. Just to add, just to add, I think it's all part of the same thing as I see it. So Creative Commons, free software, uh, open access, which is the academic part of uh, writing. Like, you know, there are still a lot of gaps in Goa. There's a lot of interest, potential volu for volunteers, but it's not happening for some reason. Like say, Goa needs an open access journal where, where people can submit academic essays. But we are stuck there with, for example, the fact that uh, now there's a full focus on scopus and recognized journals and also no one will give to an unrecognized journal. And unless we start building now, in 20 years time we are going to be where we are, if not worse. You know, so all these, these problems are there. Uh, archives, you mentioned archives. There is a list of state recognized monuments. We don't have photos of most of these. Like say the Jane Caves in, Beth, uh, in, in yeah, and, and also uh, Betora, no, where is that? Somewhere in Pond Ponda Taluka. We have no pictures. You know, for one person to go around the state doing it would be very tough. But if we had volunteers, like, you know, it's close to my okay. house, I can do it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry. There are a couple of suggestions. One is, of course, tying up with the Department of Archives and seeing if they can scan, like, local books for our old material. Because, so maybe tie up with you. The other idea was, you know, like, you have history departments in various colleges and the MA students, and maybe not just history but geography and all of them. As part of their thesis, can they also be asked to write a Wikipedia page on that particular topic that they're researching on? Yeah. So that's one possibility that you get a sort of a serious level of knowledge. The other possibility I thought of is that we can complete villages to create their village mm. websites. And like one obvious place is the biodiversity management committees because those are very active from what I understand. And if you just say that <coughs> each village take a prize, maybe through Department of Archives, best village Wikipedia. And you do that annually, it may not cost a lot of money, but if you do it smartly with the schools and the panchayat, you may be able to get a lot of people contributing who may not make a couple of suggestions only. There is a full section on Wikipedia and education which tells how Wikipedia can be used in colleges or schools or whatever. So the idea being that, see, if you do a project today, how many of our students are doing projects at the undergrad or postgrad level? that goes and ends up in some dusty bookshelf. Here you would be contributing actually to, to reusable knowledge. Absolutely, that's exactly you know, the point. They, part of the course yeah, work, yeah. talk to the university, yeah. and say make it sort of a semi-mandate or give them two marks more for a good quality. Whatever yeah. it is, you know, yeah, you can yeah. work that out. Yeah. But that way you get a lot of content. Again, the archiving will give you a backdated, your know, back content, your newspapers, whatever. The government needs a policy on open accessing its documents. For example, we were trying... PhDs. Yeah, PhDs are already on Shodhanga. They are, they are on Shodhanga. No, no, but the license, I don't know whether you can... I mean, yeah. it's available. It's available. But we, we were in talks, sorry for interrupting, we were, we were in talks with the information department. Just every day they are putting out tons of photographs, many of which are propaganda photos, but some of which have use. Say, for example, all the politicians of today. We don't have photos, say, of the first chief minister, second chief minister, shareable photos I'm talking yes, about. Yes, definitely. You it's know. the Indian government copyright, there is a copyright. So the Indian Press Information Bureau is, uh, has released there. But again, there's a little bit of uh, uh, ambiguity about how much you can use it. But on Wikimedia Commons, because the correct licensing, the Press Information Bureau's That's photos right. we can use. But as Rico said, no, but, not, about, not about Goa, like I was... Mm -hmm. Last month I was working on politicians of Goa and I realized that most of the politicians of Goa, there may be Wikipedia pages on them, but there aren't enough photos of them. So, you know, a Wikipedia article, as you can see, is not just about the text, right? There are also photos, and at least if, if, there, are multi, if there aren't multiple photos, at least one photo that says that, okay, this is the person. Again, another idea, you've got a couple of photography colleges, groups, can we again go to them and say we need 
this as part of your project, can you... Why not? Why not? But I think what Rico touched upon is the fact that, you know, the that open access of knowledge itself, right? 